The first use of horses in warfare occurred over 5,000 years ago. The earliest evidence of horses ridden in warfare dates from Eurasia between 4000 and 3000 BC. Assume we an illustration of warfare from 2500 BC depicts some type of equine pulling wagons. By 1600 BC, improved harness and chariot designs made chariot warfare common throughout the ancient Near East, and the earliest written training manual for war horses was a guide for training chariot horses written about 1350 BC. As formal cavalry tactics replaced the chariot, so did new training methods, and by 360 BC, the Greek cavalry officer Xenophon had written an extensive treatise on horsemanship. The effectiveness of horses in battle was also revolutionized by improvements in technology, including the invention of the saddle, the stirrup, and later, the horse collar. Many different types and sizes of horse were used in war, depending on the form of warfare. The type used varied with whether the horse was being ridden or driven, and whether they were being used for reconnaissance, cavalry charges, raiding, communication, or supply. Throughout history, mules and donkeys as well as horses played a crucial role in providing support to armies in the field. Horses were well suited to the warfare tactics of the nomadic cultures from the steppes of Central Asia. Several East Asian cultures made extensive use of cavalry and chariots. Muslim warriors relied upon light cavalry in their campaigns throughout North Africa, Asia, and Europe beginning in the 7th and 8th centuries AD. Europeans used several types of war horses in the Middle Ages, and the best-known heavy cavalry warrior of the period was the Armoured Knight. With the decline of the knight and rise of gunpowder in warfare, light cavalry again rose to prominence. Used in both European warfare and in the conquest of the Americas, battle cavalry developed to take on a multitude of roles in the late 18th century and early 19th century and was often crucial for victory in the Napoleonic Wars. In the Americas, the use of horses and development of mounted warfare tactics were learned by several tribes of indigenous people, and in turn, highly mobile horse regiments were critical in the American Civil War. Horse cavalry began to be phased out after World War I in favor of tank warfare, though a few horse cavalry units were still used into World War II, especially as scouts. By the end of World War II, horses were seldom seen in battle, but were still used extensively for the transport of troops and supplies. Today, formal battle-ready horse cavalry units have almost disappeared. United States Army Special Forces used horses in battle during the 2001 invasion of Afghanistan, and the United States Marine Corps has since begun new horseback training programs for special forces. Horses are still seen in use by organized armed fighters in third world countries. Many nations still maintain small units of mounted riders for patrol and reconnaissance, and military horse units are also used for ceremonial and educational purposes. Horses are also used for historical reenactment of battles, law enforcement, and in equestrian competitions derived from the riding and training skills once used by the military. Types of horse used in warfare A fundamental principle of equine conformation is form to function. Therefore, the type of horse used for various forms of warfare depended on the work performed, the weight a horse needed to carry or pull, and distance traveled. Weight affects speed and endurance, creating a trade-off. Armor added protection, but added weight reduces maximum speed. Therefore, various cultures had different military needs. In some situations, one primary type of horse was favored over all others. In other places, multiple types were needed. Warriors would travel to battle riding a lighter horse of greater speed and endurance and then switch to a heavier horse with greater weight carrying capacity when wearing heavy armor in actual combat. The average horse can carry up to approximately 30% of its body weight. While all horses can pull more than they can carry, the weight horses can pull varies widely, depending on the build of the horse. 
the type of vehicle, road conditions, and other factors. Horses harnessed to a wheeled vehicle on a paved road can pull as much as eight times their weight, but far less if pulling wheelless loads over unpaved terrain. Thus, horses that were driven varied in size and had to make a trade-off between speed and weight, just as did riding animals. Light horses could pull a small war chariot at speed. Heavy supply wagons, artillery, and support vehicles were pulled by heavier horses or a larger number of horses. The method by which a horse was hitched to a vehicle also mattered. Horses could pull greater weight with a horse collar than they could with a breast collar, and even less with an ox yoke. Lightweight light oriental horses such as the ancestors of the modern Arabian Bab and Akal Teka were used for warfare that required speed, endurance and agility. Such horses ranged from about 12 hands to just under 15 hands, weighing approximately 800 to 1,000 pounds. To move quickly, riders had to use lightweight tack and carry relatively light weapons such as bows, light spears, javelins, or, later, rifles. This was the original horse used for early chariot warfare, raiding, and light cavalry. Relatively light horses were used by many cultures, including the ancient Egyptians, the Mongols, the Arabs, and the Native Americans. Throughout the ancient Near East, small, light animals were used to pull chariots designed to carry no more than two passengers, a driver and a warrior. In the European Middle Ages, a lightweight war horse became known as the Round Sea. Medium weight, medium weight horses developed as early as the Iron Age with the needs of various civilizations to pull heavier loads such as chariots capable of holding more than two people, and, as light cavalry evolved into heavy cavalry, to carry heavily armored riders. The Scythians were among the earliest cultures to produce taller, heavier horses. Larger horses were also needed to pull supply wagons and, later on, artillery pieces. In Europe, horses were also used to a limited extent to maneuver cannons on the battlefield as part of dedicated horse artillery units. Medium-weight horses had the greatest range in size, from about 14.2 hands but stocky, to as much as 16 hands, weighing approximately 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. They generally were quite agile in combat, though they did not have the raw speed or endurance of a lighter horse. By the Middle Ages, larger horses in this class were sometimes called destriers. They may have resembled modern Baroque or heavy warm blood breeds. Later, horses similar to the modern warm blood often carried European cavalry. Heavyweight large, heavy horses, weighing from 1,500 to 2,000 pounds, the ancestors of today's draft horses, were used, particularly in Europe. From the Middle Ages onward, they pulled heavy loads, having the power to pull weapons or supply wagons and disposition to remain calm under fire. Some historians believe they may have carried the heaviest armored knights of the European late Middle Ages though others dispute this claim, indicating that the destrier, or knight's battle horse was a medium-weight animal. It is also disputed whether the destrier class included draft animals or not. Breeds at the smaller end of the heavyweight category may have included the ancestors of the Percheron, agile for their size and physically able to maneuver in battle. Ponies The British Army's second dragoons in 1813 had 340 ponies of 14.2 hands and 55 ponies of 14 hands. The Lovett Scouts, formed in 1899, were mounted on Highland ponies. The British Army recruited 200 Dales ponies in World War II for use as pack and artillery animals, and the British. Territorial Army experimented with the use of Dartmoor ponies as pack animals in 1935, finding them to be better than mules for the job. Other equids horses were not the only equids used to support human warfare. Donkeys have been used as pack animals from antiquity to the present. Mules were also commonly used, especially as pack animals and to pull wagons, but also occasionally for riding. Because mules are often both calmer and hardier than horses, they were particularly useful for strenuous support tasks.
such as hauling supplies over difficult terrain. However, under gunfire, they were less cooperative than horses, so were generally not used to haul artillery on battlefields. The size of a mule and work to which it was put depended largely on the breeding of the mare that produced the mule. Mules could be lightweight, medium weight, or even, when produced from draft horse mares, of moderate heavyweight. Training and Deployment See also Horse Training The oldest known manual on training horses for chariot warfare was written c. 1350 BC by the Hittite horsemaster, Kikuli, an ancient manual on the subject of training riding horses. Particularly for the ancient Greek cavalry is Hippike written about 360 BC by the Greek cavalry officer Xenophon. One of the earliest texts from Asia was that of Cataliar, written about 323 BC, where the horses were trained to pull chariots, to be ridden as light or heavy cavalry, or to carry the armored knight. Much training was required to overcome the horse's natural instinct to flee from noise, the smell of blood, and the confusion of combat. They also learned to accept any sudden or unusual movements of humans while using a weapon or avoiding one. Horses used in close combat may have been taught, or at least permitted, to kick, strike, and even bite, thus becoming weapons themselves for the warriors they carried. In most cultures, a war horse used as a riding animal was trained to be controlled with limited use of reins, responding primarily to the rider's legs and weight. The horse became accustomed to any necessary tack and protective armor placed upon it, and learned to balance under a rider who would also be laden with weapons and armor. Developing the balance and agility of the horse was crucial. The origins of the discipline of dressage came from the need to train horses to be both obedient and maneuverable. The haute école law, high school, movements of classical dressage taught today at the Spanish riding school have their roots in maneuvers designed for the battlefield. However, the airs above the ground were unlikely to have been used in actual combat as most would have exposed the unprotected underbelly of the horse to the weapons of foot soldiers. Horses used for chariot warfare were not only trained for combat conditions but because many chariots were pulled by a team of two to four horses. They also had to learn to work together with other animals in close quarters under chaotic conditions. Technological Innovations Horses were probably ridden in prehistory before they were driven. However, evidence is scant, mostly simple images of human figures on horse-like animals drawn on rock or clay. The earliest tools used to control horses were bridles of various sorts, which were invented nearly as soon as the horse was domesticated. Evidence of bit wear appears on the teeth of horses excavated at the archaeology sites of the Botai culture in northern Kazakhstan, dated 3500-3000 BC. Harness and vehicles The invention of the wheel was a major technological innovation that gave rise to chariot warfare. At first, equines, both horses and onagers, were hitched to wheeled carts by means of a yoke around their necks in a manner similar to that of oxen. However, such a design is incompatible with equine anatomy, limiting both the strength and mobility of the animal. By the time of the Hyksos invasions of Egypt, 1600 BC, horses were pulling chariots with an improved harness design that made use of a breast collar and breeching, which allowed a horse to move faster and pull more weight. Even after the chariot had become obsolete as a tool of war, there still was a need for technological innovations in pulling technologies. Horses were needed to pull heavy loads of supplies and weapons. The invention of the horse collar in China during the 5th century AD allowed horses to pull greater weight than they could when hitched to a vehicle, with the ox yokes or breast collars used in earlier times. The horse collar arrived in Europe during the 9th century and became widespread by the 12th century. Riding equipment Two major innovations that revolutionized the effectiveness of mounted warriors in battle were the saddle and the stirrup. Riders quickly learned to pad their horses' backs to protect themselves from the horse's spine and withers. 
and fought on horseback for centuries with little more than a blanket or pad on the horse's back and a rudimentary bridle, to help distribute the rider's weight and protect the horse's back. Some cultures created stuffed padding that resembles the panels of today's English saddle. Both the Scythians and Assyrians used pads with added felt attached with a surcingle or girth around the horse's barrel for increased security and comfort. Xenophon mentioned the use of a padded cloth on cavalry mounts as early as the 4th century BC. The saddle with a solid framework, or tree, provided a bearing surface to protect the horse from the weight of the rider, but was not widespread until the 2nd century AD. However, it made a critical difference, as horses could carry more weight when distributed across a solid saddle tree. A solid tree, the predecessor of today's western saddle, also allowed a more built-up seat to give the rider greater security in the saddle. The Romans are credited with the invention of the solid treed saddle. An invention that made cavalry particularly effective was the stirrup. A toe loop that held the big toe was used in India possibly as early as 500 BC, and later a single stirrup was used as a mounting aid. The first set of paired stirrups appeared in China about 322 AD during the Jin Dynasty. Following the invention of paired stirrups, which allowed a rider greater leverage with weapons, as well as both increased stability and mobility while mounted, nomadic groups such as the Mongols adopted this technology and developed a decisive military advantage. By the 7th century, due primarily to invaders from Central Asia, stirrup technology spread from Asia to Europe. The Avar invaders are viewed as primarily responsible for spreading the use of the stirrup into Central Europe. However, while stirrups were known in Europe in the 8th century, pictorial and literary references to their use date only from the 9th century. Widespread use in Northern Europe, including England, is credited to the Vikings, who spread the stirrup in the 9th and 10th centuries to those areas.